Hello, everybody. My name is Osmo Five Hundred Two, and welcome to Company Heroes Three. Ah uh, yes, the good old Dark Souls 1 character creator music. Welcome back to another What Matters review. And this review is going to change up a little bit because I'm playing Company Heroes 3 today, reviewing it. A little late from its uh, release, but still a game that uh, it, it very much disappoints because in the vein of the Company Heroes series and the good track record of Relic, it feels very, very, very sad. Um... This game is the third game, obviously, in the Company of Heroes franchise. Uh, and before, there was two other games that took place in different time periods of World War II. So, this game supposedly is going to take place some point in between the other two games, time period-wise. The main focal point of this game is taking place during the African theater of the war. So, we have Company of Heroes 1, which takes place a little bit after D-Day in France. And then the second game obviously takes place during Operation Barbosa earlier in the war when Nazi Germany invaded the Soviet Union. This is taking place during what I'm, if I'm correct, during most of Rommel's campaigns in Northern Africa and in the Italian theaters of war uh, before D-Day happened. So this game has of course four armies to start which is a big deal. The Africa Corps, the United States military, the Wehrmacht, and the British forces. No Italians! It's a very odd choice, to be honest. So let's start this review off on the right foot by bitching about this game immediately. The first bitching. Why is there only four 4v4 maps? Sega, Relic, come on, you put a microtransaction shop in this game pretty damn quick into its life cycle, but you couldn't give me more maps or 4v4s. The next complaint is, I actually went back into Company Heroes 2 and Company Heroes 1 to get footage for this part, because something about this game was rubbing me the wrong way with the sound. Like, just listen to it. Do you hear that? Why does it sound so, like, wimpy? Like, what is this, an airsoft fight? Nah, we're in a war here. Like, listen to this. This is the sound of an MG42 from each of the games. And you tell me which one sounds the best. It should be a pretty easy pick. And then listen to this, like, some of the tanks in this game do sound really good when they fire, but in comparison to the other games, like, again, here's another comparison, just listen to these.
This is also another small detail with the sound, but when I'm in my base in Company Heroes 3, like far away from the fighting, like looking at my buildings and building guys, it's like dead silent. We have vehicles available in reserve. when the battle's happening like multiple uh sectors away like dead quiet now listen to company of heroes 2 as a comparison Hands of grenadiers. Pioneer squad. moving to take location Panzer 4 command tanks can now be deployed you notice how it sounds like you know like a war is still going on? It, the little things like that. And then also, what is with this voice acting? Not a problem. We are taking casualties. Engineers on the hook! One of our munitions points is being neutralized. I know in the first game, they reused the same voice actor, like, for multiple teams. But in this game, it sounds like every unit on each army is voiced by one person just slightly changing like the tone of his voice it, it, company heroes 2 had proper voice acting for most units and classes where most groups sounded all completely different but in this game everybody just sounds so i don't know what it is they all sound so stupid like i don't i don't know how to explain it it's just one of those little things to bitch about the next thing to bitch about is of course the graphic style now when i first booted this game up you know the main menu was like oh look at that they're like trying to like replicate the first game's main menu okay big whoop but when i got into the game just something was rubbing me the wrong way don't get me wrong the game doesn't look horrible by modern standards it looks okay but you know they've made a decent amount of games they made dawn of war they made age of empires 4 and of course they made company of heroes and compared to the other company of heroes games this game just looks more cartoony like, it doesn't look as, like, visceral or gritty. And so then I booted up Age of Empires 4 and noticed something odd. Yeah, is it just me, or do the art styles look almost exactly the same? Like, they basically just copy and pasted their, like, template for Age of Empires 4 and just changing the Company Heroes 3. I'm not sure. The last big, kind of arbitrary thing I want to bitch about is vehicle combat. Now, I'm mostly comparing it from the second and the third game for this one, because in the first game, in my experience, of all the bot matches I played, you know, vehicles are kind of just like, yeah, you get hit and then they just kind of disintegrate. So they bleh. But it was their first game, so or their first Company Hero, so even a little slack. But in this game, sometimes in Company Heroes 3, you nail an enemy tank and it explodes, it sounds good, and it looks good. And then other times, vehicles just kind of detonate with a really soft sound following that same theme of really soft, airsoft e war. But meanwhile, take just a listen into Company Heroes 2 again. Okay, I lied. I want to bitch about one more teeny tiny tweensy little detail. It's just the vehicle sound effects. Some of the tanks sound decent. Most of them sound again too quiet. And then we just compared to the Chad Company Heroes 2. Now, to get onto at least one positive before everybody just assumes I'm going to hate Monger on this game the entire time, one of my favorite graphical and sound effect things in Company Heroes 3 compared to Company Heroes 2 is the flamethrowers. Oh my god, do the flamethrowers sound and look so cool in Company Heroes 3? I don't care if it's historically inaccurate to how they look, but just take a, another comparison of these clips from the second game and the third game and just listen in to how good they look and how good they sound in comparison.
Ah, napalm. Making Uncle Sam happy since Vietnam. Anyway, let's jump forward to gameplay. The big shift in gameplay is definitely the desensitization to combined arms warfare. It seems like in this game that combined arms wasn't really the forefront thought of this game, as opposed to just maybe sheer numbers throwing at people. Company Heroes 2's biggest point was combined arms. Company Heroes 1 main push was squad-based combat. In Company Heroes 2, it was vital to winning a battle, to using units to suppress enemies, artillery support, mortars, and then heavy armor to spearhead attacks. In this game, you can have anti-tank weapons, anti-tank tanks, target infantry, and they can still successfully kill them with decent efficiency because everything in this game seems to just be pure DPS numbers instead of it trying to be a little bit more realistic. You know, mortars are wimpy in this and they're very inaccurate as opposed to the other games. Infantry, for the most part, are pretty much useless against other infantry with very few select units. Regular Wehrmacht infantry are pretty bad in comparison to Africa Corps, but the core gameplay from the other games is still there. Capture all the points, move into the enemy's base, destroy them, and end the war. It's, it's the same core philosophies you've seen from the other two games, except in my opinion it's done a lot more poorly, as the game isn't as... it's not as polished is what it mostly feels like. On the note of gameplay, there are some little details that kind of get on my nerves a little bit, such as MG teams can no longer at least suppress enemies if they're in cover. If they're in cover, you can just stay up forever and just keep shooting, basically making your MG team placement much more important, but if the enemies can throw smoke grenades to get out of the line of fire to be unsuppressed and get into cover, your MG team is basically useless because you're never going to kill people. Cover is so integral to this game more than the others, it is unreal. If you get cover in this game, there's no way anybody's killing your infantry. They can literally suppress and mow down enemies like by the hundreds in comparison to the other games. That's why the flamethrowers are so much more needed in this game, as cover is so much more important. As opposed to the other games where, you know, your MG teams and mortars could actually flush people out of cover, and this game, don't count on it. Explosions are so weak in comparison to enemy, like, squads. You're better off just running a tank straight through them instead of throwing grenades or hitting them with mortars. Also, what's the deal with flak guns, <laughs> like on half tracks and such, not suppressing infantry? I, it was the biggest confusing thing, because in all the other games I'm so used to just using the anti-aircraft half tracks as like a substitute for faster moving suppression, and in this game they just don't do it. It, it don't make any sense. Now comes to another controversial topic, balancing. At the time of this recording, uh, of when I was making this review, the Africa Corps was still one of the stronger factions, according to Reddit and the Steam reviews. and. I say their strength mostly comes from, for some reason, a lot of their early game tank destroyers like the Marauder 2 are extremely cheap on fuel. Like, they can just spam these things. Whenever I was fighting against the bots, basically they were the only army that was ever difficult, I said that being air quotes, difficult to fight on hard difficulty, mainly because they would just spam vehicles early in the game because they were able to get them so quick. So unless you had means to fight against their early level vehicles, like if you're playing as the Americans, you had to get bazooka guys quick. If you could suppress their vehicles well enough, you would win. Also, I should say, the difficulty of the bots in this one is actually laughable. In Coming Heroes 2, Coming Heroes 1, hard difficulty is what it says, it's hard. The AI doesn't cheat yet, but it plays more aggressively, it moves infantry out of the way of abilities, it's very har much harder to fight against them. And then on Expert, of course, in all the games, the AI cheats. However, in this game, on hard difficulty, I've noticed playing against anybody but the Africa Corps, if you can just get your troops to the furthest points, you essentially win. And no matter how hard they try, you will just hold the map. But playing against the Africa Corps, there's, there actually is a strategy to it. Spam anti-tank units as early as you can and control the tank warfare side of it, and then the Africa Corps is easy as that. I never had any trouble fighting against any AI in this except for Africa Corps, simply because the Africa Corps were just much more difficult to fight due to their vehicles being such a big issue. But if you can counter them early, they're just as easy as the rest to fall. The last main two points I'll talk about is the campaign, which in this game took a Total War-esque touch with a campaign map, which people have all said is pretty terrible and really isn't needed for this game. So I didn't really get into the campaign, I'll be honest. Yeah, I put 11 hours into this game, purely based around like mostly gameplay mechanics. And finally, we're going to go over, since it's a AAA game made by a AAA company, it's never bug-free at release, and it still isn't bug-free now. I had maybe one major bug, and every other other bug was a minor animation issue. 
You know, like the MG teams not actually holding on to the MG like they do in the other games. Or how when people retreat, they seem to want to always reload while running, but they don't run while they reload. They kind of slide on the ground like they're on ice and just keep reloading like nothing's happening. The big bug I saw while I was playing as the Americans, my scouts just, I don't know if they were just seeing the future with Vietnam and they saw the trees were talking and just started opening fire on trees that were burning and they wouldn't stop until I told them to move. And so you can be seeing the footage, I rolled my mouse around because I was just so confused that it was happening. I haven't seen any other major bugs as far as I'm concerned. They've all been patched since I started playing this. But just be aware, the animation bugs are pretty common in this game and eventually you just kind of get used to it. Like when people auto vault, you know, they kind of phase through the object. Like they vault before it and phase through it. It makes no sense. I will say though, there are some redeeming, little redeeming factors. Like the example is that, you know, most uh, factions in this game have auto healing on their main buildings and they have auto reinforcing as an option, which is great. So if you're like me who mostly plays kind of just out in the battlefield, not at your main base until all your buildings are built, you can have your guys be auto healed and then auto reinforced and just keep sending orders while you're out in the middle of the field to like attack other points. And I don't have to be at my base to make sure they're up and running as opposed to, you know, coming heroes one or coming heroes two, where you actually have to reinforce them manually. In this game, it's an option to leave on auto reinforce and it is really nice. Um, but other than that though, you know, the balancing is I think what drags this game down the most. Some factions are obviously easier than the others, and yeah, these games have always had the issue like with Uber Commando West tanks are too overpowered, or you know, uh, the Soviet infantry are too powerful, or Panzer Elite are too powerful. The point is, is that the factions in those games had realistic advantages that made them really powerful, and then they also had big disadvantages that also made them much weaker. Like, I know when Uber Commando came out, their big thing was, this is going to be late World War II Germany, so they're going to have a they're going to have a fuel uh, penalty where they don't get as much fuel from points as other factions, and, you know, they don't get as many resources, so all their troops have more uh, veterancy bonuses and higher levels of veterancy to compensate for it. Like, they, in it, like, they incorporated things like that. Like, the Soviets gained increased manpower, and all their infantry squad and weapon teams were massive. But yet, not all their equipment was always the best. So it's the idea that they may do what they had, but they had the manpower advantage. You could still beat them as the Wehrmacht, Americans, British, or the Uber Commando. But it wasn't such like a black and white type of advantage or disadvantage as it is in this game. After all of this, it's finally time after, jeez, what's about like 20 minutes now, to give the final verdict. I give Company of Heroes 3 a 6 out of 10. I'm sorry, Relic, but this time you guys really frigged the pooch. You know, it really sucks because you guys messed up Dawn of War 3. You redeemed yourselves at Age Empires 4, which a lot of people did like, and myself included. And then you released this, which was really anticipated. You guys had it all. You had uh, really cool trailers you showed off. You had, uh, you know, we had four factions at launch. You know, you had a new theater of the war, which people were looking forward to. You had a lot going for you on this one. Like, you know... People were really psyched, and then, and then you get this uh, misbalanced, you know, kind of ugly-looking game with really horrid sound. It's, you know, again, it releases a AAA game, so bugs were to be expected, and no surprise, it was full of bugs. So that was something they had to patch. But then it's like, you have so little maps in this, and yet your first major like patch to release things is a DLC store. Like, you're not winning any confidence with that. Like, nobody is really rooting for you guys as much. It's like, Age Empires 4 wasn't published, if I'm correct, by Sega, which I think is the main reason why that game wasn't total baloney. Because, you know, they had a clear goal. It's like, listen, you know, we're your publisher and we're not going to make you do this crap. But Sega's like, nah, nah. We made Creative Assembly put, you know, paywall factions in the Total War games. So you guys are going to have to put a store in if you're not going to paywall any of these factions. And of course, they obliged. It's just, it's crazy because, you know, Company Heroes 2 was bad for, like, the first year. And then Relic really swing that around. Like, the commander system in that, like, got rehauled and everything. Like, in this game, the commander system is just like it wasn't the first game. So it's like, all right, you can't really complain. Everybody kind of has the same things. So it's like, it's great. But, you know, I, I can't even really begin to really explain my disappointment. Because, you know, I had hopes for this game. I... I, I did enjoy Dawn of War 3, as much as people didn't, as much as that game is dead now. I still did enjoy 
the the scale of Dawn of War 3. Yeah, the artsy graphic style, a lot of people compared it to StarCraft 2. I don't always see that as a massive negative, but I guess for a game series like Dawn of War, which is known to be more gritty and bloody and dark, you know, kind of playing this game where everything kind of looks more floaty and jumpy. But I mean, in that game, the voice acting in that game was really good, so I can give them, I can give them like, you know, kind of a free pass, but... This game is, you know, this was Relic's real bread and butter, aside from Dawn of War. You know, Company Heroes 1 was very, it was very groundbreaking when it came out in the RTS genre. Um, the squad AI in that game still is really cool. Um, and just the balance of that game, yeah, there's overpowered shit in it. Just like the three games, everybody has something overpowered. Like, if you play as the Germans in Company Heroes 2 as the Uber Commando West, and you get a King Tiger, if you protect it well, pretty much nothing can stop it. Like, and that's just how it is, but, you know, you work around it. You know, if you're the Soviets, you're going to get an IS-2. There's not much stopping it. you got to, like, actually cohesively use combined arms to defeat these massive tanks. And in this game, like, I'm sorry, but, like, bazookas in this game supposedly can pierce any armor because you can have tigers get lost by just American bazookas. I mean, when Company Heroes 2 and 1, the bazookas can't pierce the front armor of them. They bounce. But in this game, they can pierce from any side. So it's like... It, just like Dawn of War 3, you guys wanted to make this game more of like an arcade as opposed to what it was before, like a kind of like strategic thinking strategy game. And it's like, I kind of see this game as the leap from Dawn of War 1 to Dawn of War 2, where it's like, hey, where's like half the factions that were in Dawn of War 1? Why are like all of them gone? Why is it such like a downgrade? Like, why is it I have to buy two whole expansions to get everybody back? And it's like the same thing in this game. It's like, hey, yeah, Company Heroes 2 had only two armies at launch and then they added another three as the game went on but every faction felt super unique and just enjoyable in their own way and then this game's like yeah we're gonna give you four factions but the game is gonna be dog shit <laughs> that's like that's the big difference anyway guys that's gonna cut it for this review again as a reminder if anybody's made it this far all these reviews are unscripted so if i say anything that sounds stupid or doesn't make any sense that's why i don't script these videos because if i really hate something or enjoy something from a game i'm gonna remember it instead of having to write it down so uh, make sure you like, comment, subscribe for more stuff, more content on the way, blah, blah, blah. You know what to do.